And on top of that, we've just recently elected a Catholic president, and he is Catholic, he's baptized, he is a member of the family. We just elected a Catholic president who is diametrically opposed to all of the basic moral principles that are proclaimed by the Roman Catholic Church. Not only abortion and the sanctity of human life, but the sanctity of marriage and this gender silliness. How in the world did that happen? A Catholic. I'll tell you, if he wasn't Catholic, I probably wouldn't be so upset. He's a member of my family. He's the most powerful man in the world. And he is absolutely opposed to the basic understanding that God is the author of life. How in the world did this happen? You want an answer? I'll tell you the answer. Because our bishops have been silent for 60 years through bad catechesis and cowardice. They have barely said a thing. A few papers here and there. They speak. Of, there's things they could do. You say, well, once you do something, I'm just a little diocesan priest. I'm a grunt. They're the apostles. They have the voice. I just work for them at their privilege. They can get rid of me tomorrow. How have they allowed this to happen? What is it that they really believe? How poorly have they educated you? Good Lord. Can you imagine if in 2012, Mitt Romney, who was running for president, Mitt Romney, who was a Mormon, a member of the LDS church, when he was running against President Barack Obama, if he were a cigar-smoking, whiskey-drinking, coffee-drinking Mormon, can you imagine if he had won the presidency? The Mormon church would have gone apoplectic. This is, this is not a representation of us. They just would have said, oh, no, 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 no. No, don't, don't look at him. He does not represent what we believe. Probably would have excommunicated him. But what do our bishops do? They just let it snow. I apologize if it sounds like I'm yelling at you. I am angry. It's a righteous anger, the same righteous anger that Jesus had when he drove the money changers out of the temple. He didn't hate those people, but he was outraged with a sense of righteous anger. Righteous anger means I'm incensed at what you are doing to someone else, and I'm called to protect. Woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. I have to stand up for this. Jesus had to stand up for his father's dignity, so he wanted a clean house. And I have this righteous anger. I'm just tired of this. Angry to the point where I am tempted to say this. If you are pro-abortion, I am tempted to ask you to leave St. Henry Parish. Leave this parish. Tempted to say that. Because then I think, where would you go? This is not just this parish that teaches this. This is the Catholic Church. The Holy Catholic Church of God that teaches this. What parish would accept your views? Sadly, you would find one. And that is an indictment against the bishops. But God help that parish that would let your ideas foster in their parish. And so instead, I will not ask you to leave. Why? Because this may be your only chance to repent. To change your mind and to come to know the truth and finally embrace it. So I won't ask you to leave. This is your chance for salvation. You are welcome here, even if you're pro-abortion, but your ideas are not welcome here and they will be given no quarter. The same with Joe Biden. He's a Catholic. He's a member of the family. If for some reason he would be in Buckeye on a Sunday, Joe Biden is welcome to come to Mass here. His ideas are not welcome here. And if you ask me a follow-up question, would you give him communion? No. Over my dead body. Not until he repents. He's a public figure. He needs to publicly repent. We need to pray for his conversion. He is a member of the family. I will ask you this, though, if you're pro-abortion and you choose to stay. Don't give us any money. Keep your money. Why? Because I'm an honest priest. And I want you to have some smidgen of integrity. Why in the world would you give money to an organization whose ideas are contrary to what you believe. Don't give money to this parish. Don't give money to any Catholic charity, any Catholic organization. Why would you do such a thing? I hate Planned Parenthood and what they do. I hate the fact that the government funds this private organization to continue evil at my expense as a taxpayer. Oh, I do pay taxes. <laughs> Can you imagine if I gave money to Planned Parenthood? 
Why in the world would I do such a thing? So if you're pro-abortion, keep your money. We are within target of perhaps in five years completing our parish campus. You see all the, the it's exploding around us. This is all good, good for us. We're moving on building a church. And if I'm going to build the church, I'm going to build the greatest Catholic church in the Diocese of Phoenix. I'm not going to just build some place where we can hang out. We have a hole right now. We just hang out here, okay? But what I'm going to build is going to cost $10 million. I'm not kidding you. 10, maybe 12. And it's going to be great. Otherwise, I'm not putting my name on it. You can get any priest to build a box for you. But I'm not going to build it with the money from pro aborts. I'm going to build it from the money from people of faith who believe in what this church teaches about the most basic principle. Students in Christ, I feel like a university professor of literature who wants to teach you about Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace or Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment or any other great literature. But about half the class doesn't even know how to read or write. How in the world can I teach you about the beauty and the truths that, are, that lay hidden within Shakespeare when you can't even read it? I gotta go back to kindergarten and first grade to start all over. And it's the same thing with this issue on life. We gotta get over this hump, brothers and sisters. Can we please just get this down and just say God's the author of life? We have no right to mess with that life, to play with it, let alone end it because of some reason under the sun that it just doesn't fit us. Please. We say, I believe in one God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. But the Virgin Mary conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't care if you believe that. I don't care if you believe in the Trinity. I don't care if you believe in the resurrection of Christ. If you can't get the basics down, I don't care that you believe in life everlasting. Satan can say the creed with us. Lucifer can stand up here and say, because he does believe that there is one God. He knows that. He can say almost the entire creed with us. So big deal that you can say it. Not impressed. Unless there's a difference. Unless that creed and that belief motivates us in what we think and do and say in this world, in the way that we envision our lives and the meaning and the purpose. And if we can just get to that basic idea that God is the author of life, and we simply, it's not in our job description of what God gave us to do to make decisions that would harm the innocent. Brothers and sisters, if you're pro-abortion, I got nothing for you. I got nothing for you. Nothing I can share with you about scripture, about the life of Jesus Christ, about the history of the church, about the world that we're waiting for, about the reason that we, I got nothing for you. I'm wasting my time up here. If you just can't get that first thing down, please, can't you see I am begging you? Don't you get it? I don't want any of you to grow up, you young people, to become abortionists. I do not want any of you girls to have abortions and to suffer from the trauma that they don't want you to speak about, that women who have had abortions are haunted with. I don't want any of you boys taking your girlfriends or paying for your wife or forcing your daughter to get an abortion. I don't want any of you young people to grow up to be judges or to be lawyers and enact laws that will further the desecration of the sanctity of life. And I do not want you to vote for political candidates who tell you to their face that they're in favor of killing the innocent. Students in Christ, I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm not asking you to join anything. You don't have to be a protesters. I'm just asking, can we please just get over this first speed bump? Can we just do that? You know, if we just do that and just say, yeah, life is sacred. If we could just, all of us Catholics, do you realize the force that will be unleashed? If we just say, no, no, bars hold. I, I'm not, we're not doing this. If we could just believe that, watch everything else happen. Watch it all fall together, but we got to believe that first. I'm not asking you to go out and do anything. But brothers and sisters, for Father Billy Costco, the worm has turned. <laughs> and yes, it's largely motivated by the fact that the most powerful man in the world is a Catholic. And his actions squash my little puny voice. Oh, the worm has turned. You may say, oh, are we going to lose the funny Father Billy? That's not possible. <laughs> my sense of humor is sewn into my soul, so... 
but I got to get off the bus. Man, it is snowing outside, and you know what that is. It ain't snow, and you know where it's coming from. So I got to get off the bus, and I'll probably get my butt kicked, but it's the right thing to do. I just hope this time more than two guys join me. God help us. Don't, don't applaud. We need to hang our heads in shame. We have tolerated this for too long.